being a chartered engineer acquiring membership from certified management accountants supported me immensely to become a chief executive officer of a reputed company cme is not only producing professional certified accountants they have been developing uh, their skills through continuous professional development programs cme is keen to uh, develop their communication skills as well through their cma program CMA for creating the pathway to being a world recognized management accountant. Hello everyone. Uh, under the A level business studies subject, uh, today we are going to discuss about the important uh, functional field of management that is uh, human resource management. Uh, you know there are several functional fields in the organization that is uh, uh, marketing management, uh, then uh, financial management, production management and the human resource management. Among those functional fields, human resource management is most important uh, functional field in the organization because uh, collecting other resources and uh, taking decisions, making decisions heavily depend on human resource. Therefore, human resource management is most important factor. Uh, today, we are going to discuss about the examines the way of using human resource efficiently for the success of business. Under that, uh, we are going to discuss introduction to human resource management, job designing and job analysis, uh, human resource planning, employee attraction, selection, hiring employees, performance appraisal, training and development, employee movement, discipline management, employee health and safety management, industrial relations. We will see introduction to human resource. Let us discuss defines human resource management under this topic that we are going to discuss about defines human resource management the specialties of human resource in comparison to other resources the goals of human resource management the importance of human resource management the functions of human resource management what is the def definition of human resource management all the activities related to utilization of human resource efficiently and effectively so as to ensure the employee satisfaction and development in order to achieve the goals of an organization is known as human resource management. When uh, we can uh, see in this definition, uh, there are most important words because we have to uh, utilize human resource efficiently and effectively. Otherwise, we have to ensure the employee satisfaction and development. Uh, therefore, uh, we have to consider about those uh, important uh, words in this definition. The specialties of human resource in comparison to other resources, vitality of human resource, ability to react and think, ability to control all other resources, increase in value through training, ability to work in teams, behavior being complex and unable to forecast, possessing creative skills. The goals of human resource management can be stated like this, improving the employee effectiveness, increase in the commitment of employees, employee development, motivating employees, employee welfare, recruiting employee for the job at the right time, motivation of employees, relations of suitable employees in the firm, improving the industrial relations. Controlling the cost of employment, it means that the salaries, overtime, payments, cost, uh, recruitment, 
cost of dismissal, those are the uh, cost that control. Otherwise, uh, fulfilling the social and legal responsibilities of the organization related to human resources, that is also the goal of human uh, resource management. The importance of human resource management can be stated like this. Human resource can think, feel, understand and react as it is live compared to other resources. As human resource makes decisions regarding all the other resources, it is the most important and valuable resource. Human resource is the vital resource that can be used to obtain long term competitive advantages and to assure the survival of the business. Managing human resource is not only a task of HR manager, but also it is the collective responsibility of all other managers of the business. Human resource management is very important for the welfare of the society. Uh, when we consider about the functions of the human resource management, actually uh, human, uh, studying the human resource management means uh, studying these functions at human resource, as a human resource management. The first one is job design, the function of arranging tasks, duties and responsibilities into an organizational unit of work is job design. Job analysis is the function of investigating systematically jobs and job holder characteristics in order to create a collection of job information. Manpower planning, the process of determining future employee needs and deciding steps or strategies to achieve those needs. Recruitment, the process of finding and attracting qualified people to apply for employment. Selection, the process of making the choice of the most appropriate person from the pool of applicants recruited to fill the relevant job vacancies. Hiring, the process of appointing the person selected to the post jobs which are vacant. Induction, the function that systematically and formally introduced the new employees to the organization. Performance appraisal, the function that measures degree of effectiveness and efficiency of employees in performing their jobs. Training and development, the process of improving current and future employees performance by increasing employee competencies through uh, acquisition of knowledge, skills and attitudes. Employee movements, changes, the function that deals with promotions, transfers, layoffs, etc. in the right ways at the right time. Management of payments, the process of development implementation and maintenance of a base pay system which adheres to external equity, internal equity and absolute equity. Employee welfare, the group of activities involved in the development, implementation and ongoing maintenance of a fair and effective system of facilities and comforts to enhance standard of living or employees. Disciplinary management, the group of activities involving planning and controlling behavior of employees to compliance with established rules and regulations. Health and safety management, the group of activities involved in creating, improving and maintaining total health and safety of employees. Grievances handling, the function that identified and solves Discontents arises from feeling of injustice felt by employees in connection with work environment, employer and employee relations, management of all interactions which occur between management and trade union. 
The next important topic is job design and job analysis. Under this topic that we are discussing about defines the job design in, defines the job analysis, all information included in job description and job specification. What is the job design in? Generating or creating of a job to achieve a certain goal is the simplest idea of this. Arrangement of tasks, duties and responsibilities assigned for a work unit of the firm in order to achieve a particular goal is known as the job design in even job comprises of task duties and responsibilities. I told you that we have to arrange the task duties and responsibilities uh, and uh, then we have to create an uh, job achieve a certain goals in the simplest idea of this. Job analysis, job analysis is a systematic review of the features and related behavior of a job and the qualities and qualifications that should be possessed by the employee. The information taken from the jobs analysis is used to prepare the job description and job specification. After the job analysis, we are preparing most important two documents. They are uh, job description and the job specification. What is the job description? The statement which describes the task duties, responsibilities, working conditions, payments and benefits, the number of working hours, the nature of the job and to whom she he is responsible, etc. relevant to a certain job is the job description. What is the job specification? The document prepared containing the qualification that should be possessed by the individuals who would be considered for recruitment is known as the job specification. Such qualification can be stated as follows. It means that the educational qualification, professional qualification, physical fitness and experience. Specialized skills, linguistic knowledge, attitudes and passion, general knowledge, intelligence level. Next topic is human resource planning. Under this topic, we are discussing about define the human resource planning, importance of human resource planning, steps of human resource planning. Defines the human resource planning. The process of determining the future employee requirements and making decisions regarding the activities to be implemented to fulfill those requirements in order to achieve the goals and objectives of a firm is called human resource planning. Right? Then uh, we have to determine in the future employee requirement and we have to do the uh, or making the decision regarding the activities to be implemented to fulfill those requirements is uh, human resource planning. Importance of human resource planning, ability to determine the future human resource requirement ability to minimize labor cost by identifying excess and deficiencies in a labor and taking necessary action for them, ability to avoid unnecessary costs that may occur due to sudden recruitments, ability to utilize human resource efficiently and productively, ability to lead the other management functions of the organization in the expected manner. Uh, for the development of highly competent employees. 
we will see what are the steps of human resource planning. Forecast in the future human resource requirements is first one. Then we have to assess in the human resource supply. Uh, then we have to compare in the demand and supply of human resources. After that developing the strategies to be implemented to recruit the human resources. Preparing the human resource planning. Evaluating the efforts taken for human resource planning. Next topic is employee attraction. Under that, uh, we are going to explain about define the recruitment, the recruitment process, examples for internal ways of attraction, examples for external ways of attraction, the advantages and disadvantages of internal and external ways of attraction. Define the recruitment. The process of attracting the job seekers with positive attitudes and capabilities supporting the achievement of organizational goals, objectives is known as recruitment. Then we can see in this definition, uh, we have to attract job seekers with positive attitudes and capabilities. Without the capabilities and positive attitudes, it is not uh, suitable for the organization. Otherwise, it is supporting the achievement of organizational goals is also important. Therefore, uh, we can define like this. The recruitment process, recognizing vacancies for job, manpower plan, special request for managers, we can get those uh, documents or uh, request to uh, recognize in the vacancies for job. Studying the job specifications, job analysis information, managers opinions, we can study. Then identifying the employee factors relevant to attraction, policies of the organization, cost, time and other. Preparing the application form, selecting the way, ways of recruitment, it means that the, we can select the employees uh, or the uh, recruit the employees internally or externally, we can decide it. Uh, in addition to that, implementation, it means that the applying for vacancies by individuals and receipt of applications. Finally, evaluation. Example for internal ways of attraction, uh, attracting employees from the firm itself is the internal recruitment. So job posting is first one, uh, notifying about the vacancies by publishing advertisement in firm, newspapers, magazines and on the notice boards in the firm. Uh, skills inventories, skills list for the identification of internal employees who are capable of applying for the relevant job vacancies, the usage of skill inventory prepared at manpower planning by entering the skills, abilities and qualifications of employees, intranet Call in for application through publish the advertisement about the job vacancies in internet, referrals from internal employees, recommending the acquainted individuals like one's associates and relations by current employees for the vacancies. Succession plan, formal documents are maintained in a firm with regard to the facts like the qualification experience and seniority etc. of the employees. When a vacancy arises, the next most suitable individual will be used for it. Examples for external ways of attraction. External recruitment is the attracting applicants 
for the post of a firm from outside the firm through media advertisements, it means that the electronic or printed, through internet, web pages for jobs, through past employees, through educational, professional and vocational institutions, through job based agencies, through professional associations, through job fairs, through higher education institutes. The advantages and disadvantages of internal and external ways of attraction under that, uh, when we consider about the advantages of internal employee recruitment, we can mention like this, employee being motivated, creating good labor relationship, easy to retain the most suitable employees, reduction in the cost of attraction and recruitment, increase in the loyalty and dedication of the employees towards the firm, reduction in time spent for employee induction. Disadvantages of internal employee recruitment, modern knowledge does not flow into the firm, chances for recruiting the most suitable individuals being less creating an unnecessary competition among the workers, incurring a high cost for training, innovation do not inflow. When we consider about the advantages of external employee recruitment, uh, ability to attract individuals with new knowledge, ability to recruit the most suitable individuals for the post, reduction in the cost for training and development since the recruitment of trained labor taking place. When we consider about the disadvantages of external employee recruitment, we can uh, mention like this, obstructing motivation of existing employees, increase in the cost of attraction consuming more time for attraction, it may adversely affect the employer-employee relationship. The next most important topic is selection. Uh, when we select in the people, facts to be considered when selection uh, can be mentioned like this, knowledge, attitude, skills, physical and mental suitability. Uh, from considering these methods, we can uh, apply the methods of selecting like this, evaluation of application, interviews, IQ test, personality test, practical test, medical test, background test. Uh, I will explain one by one uh, the methods of selecting uh, application evaluation. The selection is done according to the detail provided in the application without seeing the person is application evaluation. Interview is the selection method where the exchange of ideas face to face between the candidate and the examining board takes place meeting. The most suitable candidate for the job is the interview method. Intelligence coordinate testing, the testing held aiming to measure the intelligence capacity of the candidate for the job meant by this. Here, the ability to face challenges will be examined. Personality test, the testing used to measure the attitudes, passion, skills, values and norms of the candidate of the job is the personality test. Practical test, the testing conducted to measure in the real ability of the selected 
individual or accomplish the certain tasks of the relevant job is the practical test. Medical test, the testing conducted to verify if the job candidate possess the required health condition to accomplish the task duties and responsibilities of the relevant job is the medical test. Background test, the special testing conducted to disclose the personal background of the job candidate, the family background, education, profession, financial and social background will be investigated here. Next important topic is hiring employees. Methods of hiring employees, we can use these two methods. It means that the permanent base and the temporary base. Appointment letter is another point that we have to discuss. Importance of an appointment letter, content of an appointment letter, another two points that we have to discuss, induction and the probationary period. Methods of hiring employees under that permanent base. The recruitment of employees permanently for a job of a firm is the recruitment of employees on permanent base. The employee who has been recruited like this is be a considered one in the permanent staff and engages in the main functions of an organization. They are entitled for all the privileges of an employee. The probationary period is mentioned in the appointment letter as well. Temporary base, recruiting employees without permanent base is the recruitment of employees on temporary base. These employees also can engage in the main functions of the firm. In their appointment letter, the temporary base is mentioned. Now we can uh, see what are the uh, points that including in appointment letter, the legal document issued by the management after the employee is being appointed, starting the terms, conditions, tasks, duties and responsibilities of the job in detail is known as the letter of appointment. The letter of appointment is considered as a written proof that the job contract is formed. Since the letter of appointment is a legal document, it is important for the employees as well as the employer. Then we can see importance of an appointment letter, content of an appointment letter. First one is that importance of an appointment letter being document that could prove the relationship between the firm and the employee. It could be considered as a contract in which the firm and the employee is bound legally. Ability to present this as an evidence in front of the law at the problematic situation created between the two parties regarding job conditions. The employee being able to get a wide acknowledgement regarding the task duties and responsibilities of this job being a strong evidence that could be used at every time required to prove that this employee is an employee of the firm. Content of an appointment letter, we can see like this type of content. It has included in the appointment letter, title of the position, name of the employer and employee, effective date of appointment, job conditions, salary scale, probationary period, number of working hours dates, benefits, disciplinary procedure, rights and privileges of the employee, it means that the leaves, EPF, ETF, 
termination of the service, way to forward grievances, confirmations and promotions, signature of the employer and employee. Induction, introducing a newly recruited employee to the organization and make him her aware about the job, work team, work environment and the entire organization is known as induction. The probationary period we can be uh, stated like this. The period of service that should be completed by a newly recruited employee prior to be made him her permanent in the job is the probationary period. The management can take the following action in the absence of proper inform performance of duties and responsibilities by an employee during the probationary period. Termination of service, warning verbally and in written form, extending the probationary period and transfer into another department. Next important topic is performance appraisal, define the performance appraisal, importance of performance appraisal to the organization is uh, most important. Defines the performance appraisal, the performance appraisal is the process of supervising and reporting to what extent the relevant duties are performed successfully by the employee. In this definition, we can see process of uh, supervising and reporting to what, what extent relevant duties are performed successfully by the employees most important in the performance evaluation. Importance of performance appraisal to the organization to recognize the training needs, to make the decision and promotion and transfers, to take disciplinary actions, enhancing the employee productivity, increasing the employee motivation. Next topic is training and development. Under this topic that we are discussing about the differences between training and development, the methods of training and development, the benefits of training and development to the employee and employer separately. What is the difference between training and development? Uh, training, provision of job related knowledge, skills and attitudes to the employees in non-managerial level is training, preparing the employee to perform the duties and responsibilities of the current job by training, relatively a short term program, the cost incurred is relatively low, uh, somewhat a simple program. This is related to the current job, a process of reacting for the fulfillment of timely needs. The uh, development means provision of knowledge, skills and attitudes to the employee in management level, a process of reacting for the fulfillment of prospective job requirement relatively a continuous long term program, a cost incurred is relatively high, a very wide program. This is re related to make future changes, a process of pre-acting for a fulfillment of prospective needs. The methods of training and development we can, uh, I have given here only a uh, few number of uh, training and development methods. In addition to that, there are uh, 
many uh, training and development programs that we can see. Uh, the first one is apprentice training. Training is given to people who are new to the jobs. This training is for new employees. It consists of learning theory in the classroom and practice in the job setting. On the job training, training is given by allowing the trainee to perform duties of the job. While performing the duties of the job, the employee learns the know-how to do in the job. Job rotation, training is given by shifting the trainee from one job to another job. The trainee is required to work on a certain job for a certain period of time. Role play, training is given by allowing learners to act out a particular situation. Acting out is based on a case of critical incident or an unsuccessful performance and or a successful performance of a certain activity function. Programmed instruction, this allows the trainee to learn through self-study. It involves distance learning. It is alternatively called programmed learning. Simulation, training is given in an artificial place an artificial working place that has similar features to the actual working place using actual tools and equipment or equipment simulators to create it and the trainee is trained by placing in this artificial setting. The benefits of training and development to the employee, this kind of benefits uh, we can uh, gain through the training and development to the employee, enhancement of the job satisfaction, improvement in employee performance, more chances of getting promotions, improvement in the professional value of the employee, more opportunities to test new skills, ability to gain extra benefits. The benefits of training and development to the employee, improve, improvement in employee performance and up, updating their knowledge and skills, improvement in the quality of the output, creating an employee motivation, enhancing employee loyalty, lowering the faults and wastage incurred by employees, minimizing employee absenteeism minimizing employee turnover. The next topic is employee movement. Uh, under the employee movement, we are discussing about promotions, transfers, dismissal and termination of service. Promotion means an employee of an organization being appoint, appointed to a higher position than the previous one. The promotion is generally a movement to another position which consists of more duties and responsibilities than the previous one. Transfer, replacing an employee for the same job can be called as transfer. Transfer is a movement that takes place in horizontal direction. Dismissal, discontinuing the service of an employee due to factors or a fact which cannot be controlled by the management of the organization is the dismissal. Termination of service, moving out of the service when the age of the employee is completed is the termination of the service. Next one, next topic, discipline management. Under this topic, we are discussing about defines discipline management, importance of discipline management, the anti-disciplinary actions or misconduct, the disciplinary actions. We can uh, define disciplinary management like this. The standard or employer's expected behavior from the employee 
to carry on a business organization formally and legally can be called as discipline or else the good behavior of the employee is called discipline. Disciplinary management means the development, operating and maintenance of a dis disciplinary procedure is called as discipline management. Importance of discipline management, minimizing the disputes among the colleagues, decreasing conflicts in between employer and employees, ability to manage the human resource of the business properly with maximum efficiency and effectiveness to maintain employee behavior in accordance with rules and regulations of the organization to create expected employee performance and to maintain it continuously. The anti-disciplinary actions or misconducts we can uh, mention like this, willful damages to the organizational resources, not reporting to the work without prior permission, late attendance to the work, leaving the workplace without prior permission, showing fraudulent illness, sleeping at work, negligence and less attention towards the job, disturbing the safe and health measures of the business, taking liquor at the workplace, bribery and corruption, insulting or threatening the employer or the colleagues. The disciplinary actions that can be taken by the employer, verbal warning, written warning, fines or recharging the loss, suspension from the job temporary, transferring from the job as a disciplinary action, holding of salary increment or making it delaying, demotion from the post, termination from the job. Next topic is employee health and safety management under this topic. We are discussing about defines employee health and safety, importance of employee health and safety, disadvantages of weak management of the employee health and safety to the employer, benefits of the health and safety management to the employer. We can define the employee health and safety like this, the perfect mental and physical fitness of the employee to perform the tasks, duties and responsibilities of his job is called as health, protecting the employees from all the hazards causing the health of the employees called safety, disadvantages of weak management of the employee health and safety to the employer increasing the premium of health insurance scheme of the employees due to frequent payment of compensation by the insurance companies, increasing the compensation payments, increasing charges for legal requirements, dissatisfaction and unrest of the employee increases, decreasing employee productivity, decreasing quality of the employees, the damages to the tools increases, increase in the expenses of medical charges, damage in the goodwill of the business, increase in the employee absenteeism and turnover. Uh, when we consider about the benefits of the health and safety management to the employer, uh, we can uh, mentioned like this, increasing the morale of employees, minimizing the cost of expenses relating to the legal requirements, minimizing employee turnover, increasing the productivity of the business, developing a strong industrial relation, organizations 
who purchase from other organizations give tri priority to those which engage in health and safety management. The next uh, final topic is industrial relations. Under the industrial relations, we are discussing about defines industrial relations, the benefits of good industrial relations, the consequences of poor industrial relations, industrial disputes, effects faced by the employer due to industrial dispute, negative consequences of the industrial disputes to the employee, negative consequences of industrial disputes to the customers, trade union. Defines industrial relations. Any type of professional relationship between the employer and employee is known as industrial relations. Here I have mentioned that two words employer and the employee. Who are the employers? The person who engages some person or a group of persons on some salary or wage called employer. Employee means any person who has come to an agreement to work under the employer in receiving some salary or wage, any base or contract is called an employee. Uh, the benefits of good industrial relations we can mention like this. Improvement in labor productivity minimizing the waste of the resources, lowering the employee absenteeism, lowering the employee turnover, creating a team of motivated employees, minimizing the em employee disputes. The consequences of poor industrial relations we can uh, mention like this, weakness, the business process due to strikes and labor crisis, declining the employee productivity, uh, diminishing the morale of the employees, uh, wasting of resources, dropping the efficiency and the effectiveness of the entire firm. Industrial disputes, job related dispute arises between employers and employees are known as industrial disputes. Effect faced by the employer due to industrial dispute, uh, we can mention like this, inability to carry on business activities continuously, damaging the goodwill of the business disturbing the industrial harmony, losing the market share, inability to compete with the competitors, financial losses and damages to the resources of the organization. Negative consequences of the industrial disputes to the employee, not receiving salary on time, Decrease in the living standard, the good relationship with the employer damages due to the breach of industrial harmony, disturbing the future promotions, training, scholarships, etc. Negative consequences of industrial disputes to the customers we can mention like this, increase in the price of the relevant product having a scarcity of that product in the market, inability to consume that product, consumer has to consume low quality products. Uh, the next important uh, factor in uh, or the thing in uh, labor relations, trade unions, Tra what is the trade unions? An organization voluntarily established by the employers or employees of a particular industrial field in order to gain and protect their professional right is known as a trade.
trade union. Uh, then you can see uh, voluntarily established by the employer or employees, both can voluntarily establish. Uh, few aims of a trade union to gain a reasonable salary and pleasant working environment to get the working hours reduced, to get protection from job related accident and health problems, to participate in management decision made in the firm, to assure job security, getting education and training to gain relief uh, for sick, retired or employee on strike. Some of the trade union actions we can be stated like this. They can collective bargaining. The collective bargaining is the negotiating process between the management and the trade union in order to achieve the aim of employee, work to rule, uh, following every single rule and regulations and doing a small quantity of work is known as work to rule. Go slow, go slow occurs when workers deliberately work slowly, working dressed with the black stripes, working with the black stripe tied in the hand or head is another method of showing the protest. Abstain from working over time means workers refusing to work more than their normal working hours. Sit-ins means employees do not allow to close the business premises and also they do not perform duties. Boycott means stoppage of work of both employees and machines to stop the business operational process. Sabotage means locking up of the machineries by the employees or removing a small part of the machines to avoid this functioning. Picketing is a protesting of the employees showing banners, posters, notices in free times like lunch break. Fasting, a uh, fast happens when the employees protest in the public areas to win their demand without consuming any drink or food. Taking leaves collectively, token strike, being away from duties during a particular period such as a day or a half day after informing the management is considered as a token strike. Continuous strikes, employees completely stop working due to failure of gaining their demands through negotiations or any other protesting campaigns is known as a continuous strike.